Chapter 2, Fan Mail. Now playing as Ash. The day after Ava's mysterious accident, you're poring over a piece of threatening fan mail. You're sure you don't have any idea who could have sent this letter? No clue. And there's no name or return address, of course. The trailer door swings open with Raimi enters with a producer you've occasionally seen on set. All right, Miss Navarro, what's this about? Caroline and I are very busy people. Oh, they even typed it on the letter. According to this letter, yesterday's accident was anything but. The producer snatches the letter from your hand, reads it, and then passes it to Raimi. And we're sure it's not just some delusional fan taking credit. Yeah, I think we're uh, overreacting. I got hate mail when I was working on indies. It's part of the job, unfortunately. It's not just the letter. It's about the photo that came with it. Whoever took the photo had to wait on set for the rig to break. Or at least had an accomplice who did. The picture proves it. This is more than idle hate mail. You don't know that. I have experience analyzing threats from my time in Special Forces, and this one's worth taking seriously. I completely agree. The studio needs to take action immediately and hire a bodyguard for my client. That's a bit extreme. Like Caroline said, we don't even know if this letter is connected with the accident. Agreed. We're already struggling to keep things on schedule. If the press finds out about this stalker, then there'll be even more interruptions we can't afford. Rage bubbles as you remember holding Ava just after the accident, feeling her tremble in your arms. She felt so fragile. All you wanted to do was keep holding her forever, shielding her from harm. Her life is on the line. How can he be so callous about it? Mr. DeLong. What if the stalker actually hurts your lead actress? You swallow your indignation, pulling the move or putting the movie over Ava's life, but you know it's worth the argument that will work. If you think this is a mess now, you have no idea how bad it could get. Miss Navarro and Mr. Harper have a point, Raimi, especially considering the culprit has access to the studio. Exactly. If you're worried about your schedule, the stalker's an interruption waiting to happen. So hire Ava a bodyguard and catch this asshole. Gemma, I already said I don't need a bodyguard. They can buff up security around the studio. I'm not saying no, but Ava getting a bodyguard after yesterday's incident will attract attention. And it could make the stalker go underground. We'll be more likely to catch them if they don't think we're onto them. Can we slow down for a second? This is all so much. But the others keep talking as though Ava hadn't said anything at all. She sinks into the chair. Everyone's so caught up in the logistics, no one's even checked on her. I should... comfort her. You place a comforting hand on her shoulder, your fingers brushing softly over the back of her neck. It's okay if you're afraid. Anyone would be after what you went through. But I'm... we're not going to let it happen again, okay? Some of the tension seems to spill out of her, and she even offers you a small smile. When you say it like that, it sounds like the truth. That's because it is. Wait, that's it. The press is in love with you and Ava after yesterday, and you have special forces training. So we let everyone think the rescue was a, a meat cute, and you can pretend to be Ava's boyfriend until we catch the stalker. It's a great idea, not to mention the attention it will draw to the film. Who said anything about me being her bodyguard? I already have a job. Not blurring the lines between my personal life and work, not again. If you're really serious about this, Gemma, can we at least hire an actual professional? Oof. Even though you don't want the job, can't make the same mistake again, you flare with anger at the suggestion. Whoa, hold on. I am a professional. You know what I mean. Guard is literally on my job title. I was also a personal bodyguard during my deployment. Even better, it's a match made in heaven. Just give it a try. Go on one teeny fake date, see if you can make it work. If not, well, think of something else. 
Ava glances at you and shrug, trying to ignore the thrill you feel the thought, prospect of staying close to her. I can't be her bodyguard, but this is probably the closest I'll ever get to taking her on a date. Might as well enjoy it. Up to you, Starlet. I'm on the clock, so I don't think I'm actually allowed to say no. She chews her lower lip, and you want to run a, your thumb along the supple skin to free it from her teeth. I suppose I can give it a try. A few hours later, you meet Ava in front of the Abacus, one of the hottest, most expensive restaurants in LA. Well, here we are. As hot as you are in uniform, I have to say, this is a good look for you. She eyes you like you're water in a desert, hungry and heated. She's an actor, she knows how to put on a show for the camera even when she's not sure there is one. Figured I'd uh, be a li bit less conspicuous in civvies. A noise down the street draws your attention and you spot a crowd of people with cameras. Looks like the paparazzi are already getting on our trail. Let's get inside before they can bother us. Open the door for her. You wonder if you should play into the act, but opt to keep things professional instead of reaching out to open the door for her. After you. Wow, that's that's where we put being... Okay, I'm a little upset, but okay. When she brushes past you, her arm skims lightly against yours. And they say chivalry is dead. Yep, that's the word I was looking for. You can feel her warmth through your jacket, and the scent of her perfume has your head spinning. Your muscles tense as you try to quell the sudden urge to pin her against the door and take her mouth with yours. Steady, don't get caught up in the fantasy. This is all just a means to an end, remember? By habit, you survey the room as soon as you enter, then you pull Ava's chair out, your fingers brushing her shoulders as she sits down. Just that small, innocent touch sets your nerves aflame, and you pull away as they're burned, hurrying to take your own seat across from her. I'm gonna have the Mushroom Swiss Burger. It's the chef's specialty. Is it your cheat day, or is that specially made of tofu and bean sprouts? I can think of a plenty of ways to burn off those calories, can't you? She arches a teasing eyebrow and you shift, pushing away the pooling desire. She's acting as, just play along. Uh, now that I'd like to see. Maybe I'll even let you join in. After you place your orders, Ava stares at you from over her hands, drawing you in. Keep it together, Ash. But you still find yourself lost in the tender curve of her lips, the temptation too strong. So, first impressions, what do you think of me? You're even sexier up close. You let yourself appreciate the truth of it, taking in her delicate features, the figure so perfect and might as well have been sculpted. Oh, so you've noticed me. I have eyes. There'd be something wrong with me if I hadn't noticed you. And what is it you noticed? I'd love to hear about it in exquisite detail. You're saved, as the waiter returns with your food, the smell filling you with a different kind of hunger. Looks amazing. I guess we're eating this as well. <clears throat> Maybe takes a bite of her burger and lets out a sigh, her lashes fluttering. You're practically giving it bedroom eyes. I can give you two some privacy if you want. No need. I'm used to being watched. Arousal curves in your belly, only worsening when she licks her lips. But the momentary rush you feel at the side is doused as you remember why you're here. Damn it, Ash, what's happened to being professional? You clear your throat, forcing yourself to change the subject. So why'd you get into acting? It's the same story as a lot of kids, really. I used to imagine myself in the stories I read, playing out different roles. I never thought I'd end up here in the dream role. My character, Celine, was my hero back in high school. Honestly, she still is. She smiles, and your pulse quickens when you notice some Eliola in the corner of her lamp. Guide her hand to it. She can decide. You've got something, uh... Though your body is screaming at you to wipe it away, or lick it away, you merely take her hand and guide it up to her mouth. You glide your fingers along the inside of her wrist as you let go. There. 
She wipes it away with her thumb, then licks it off, giving you a brief but tantalizing lips of her tongue. My hero. You lean back in your chair, putting some distance between you to let the electricity dissipate. <clears throat> so, what made you want to go into the service? My dad used to be a stuntman, and I was raised on a steady diet of classic films and action movies. He was my idol. I wanted to be a hero, just like the characters he helped to bring to life. And it had nothing to do with the fact that heroes always get the drop-dead gorgeous girl in the end. Hmm, that certainly didn't hurt. She hesitates for a moment, and when she speaks, her tone is gentle. It's okay if it's too personal, but what was it like to serve? It's not easy to put it into words. It changes you in ways you could never predict. I can't even imagine. If he doesn't know how right she is and you want it to stay that way, you shrug dismissively. But uh, you want that gritty, honest truth? It's boring, especially compared to your world. There's a knock on the window and you turn to see several flashes go off. The board's face is plastered, plastered against the glass. Looks like they found us after all. You're already out of your chair, ready to tell them off, and Ava catches your hand, her touch electric. What do you say we get away from them and lay low somewhere for a while? Her fingers trail up your arm, each brush stoking a burning heat inside of you. I can get us a private all-access tour of the Hollywood Museum. They're closed today, but I know the curator. We could have the whole place to ourselves. You lean towards her, magnetically drawn in until you can feel her breath tickle your chin, her skin. In case you need some more personal time with me before you decide if you want to be my bodyguard. You're intrigued by the museum, but more than anything you feel a dangerous thrill at the idea of being alone with her. Thoughts at the end of the video. Despite your better judgment, you can't say no. You tell yourself that it's better to sell the fake date, but some part of you admits. That actually does sound fun. Lead the way. When you get to the museum, Ava takes you around back and punches a coat into the staff door. Are you sure this is okay, sneaking in the museum like this? Don't worry, I got the code straight from the museum's director. It's all on the up and up. Though I have to say I'm surprised you're worried. I figured you'd be used to a little danger. Yeah. But I'm not worried about myself. I've been in plenty of risky situations, come out unscathed. I just don't want you to get in over your head. Oh, you're looking out for me. That's sweet. Something about her smile grounds you, even as it makes other feelings stir. She punches in the code and the door swings open. It's dim inside, the only light coming from the spotlights on each display, lending the scene of air of the theatrical. I know museums are usually quiet, but there's a whole other level. There are some of other benefits to the VIP experience, too. For example, still smiling coyly, she reaches out and gently taps a prop statue on a pedestal. We can touch. You raise an eyebrow at her. How far does that freedom extend? To anything you want. Her words seem to race through your every nerve. Sounds like that could get dangerous. That's half the fun. She saunters over to the mannequin wearing a feather boa. Says it's from Chicago. Avo pulls on the boa off the mannequin, drapes it around your shoulders, shimming to draw it across your back. You try not to notice her price pressing against her shirt, but your body betrays you as heat pulls low in your belly. That does add a new level of uh, immersion. It certainly does. So, what catches your eye? You scan the props and costumes around the room, and your gaze lingering on set of lingerie, silk rose, massage oil. Keep it professional. <clears throat> you run your fingers over the delicate petals, ones you recognize from a particular stirring film. A rose I pegged you for more of a guns and great swords kind of guy. My parents didn't want me to watching this movie because of the rose scene, so obviously I had to see it. 
I don't know the movie. What happens? The main character trails the rose all over his love interest nude body. All over. Sounds hot. I'll have to watch it sometime, maybe take notes. You wander further into the museum and come across a meticulously recreated set from one of your favorite movies, a sexy spy thriller. No time but now. I love this movie. Me too. Do you remember the scene after the car chase where Agent Vaughn saves Andrea Deverox? I know it by heart. She takes you by the wrist and pulls you onto the set, her posture shifting to match the of the femme fatale Miss Deverox. When she speaks, it's a low purr that sends a pulse of desire through you. Agent Vaughn, you've risked everything to save me, and I never let a debt go unpaid. She shapes towards you with a smolder, a challenge, the air crackling between you. Wait, Miss Devereaux, you owe me nothing. You straighten your posture to match Agent Vaughn's with how awfully Ava is embodying her role. It's easy to fall in yours. I take no payment for a life saved, especially one as priceless as your own. Then perhaps you are in my debt, for you've awakened desires within me, desires that demand satisfaction. She takes another step forward and you become a achingly aware of how little distance separates you. Then satisfaction is what I offer, as much and as often as you desire. The touch of your lips is a treasure beyond compare. You're only inches apart. Her presence is intoxicating. After a long moment of pregnant silence, she whispers, And Agent Vaughn, the scene reaches its climax with a kiss. Time seems to slow down as you gaze into her eyes. In this electrifying moment, the line between fiction and reality blurs. You know you shouldn't, and yet her lips are so close. The temptation is too much to bear. Her lips are soft, subtle, against yours, demanding a taste, yet your hands twitch at your sides, aching to feel more of her. You reach up to hold her face as you deepen the kiss, raveling in her delicate skin. She melts against you, and you nearly forget this is an act. Andrea. The name is wrong, but her taste is intoxicating, quickly overshadowing the brief flicker of doubt. Your hand drifts to her neck as you press a kiss to the corner of her mouth. Agent Vaughn, you're so good to me. Her words are whispered against your skin, and you're leaning in to capture her lips again when... The sound of a door closing on the other, uh, in the other room abruptly it jolts you out of the fantasy and you both jump apart. Miss Ava, I'm about to lock up and head home. I can't keep getting carried away like that. You carried away once, dude. Ava straightens up her clothes and gives you a small smile. I guess that's our cue. Right, um, <clears throat> we should head back to the studio. If we keep Gemma waiting any longer, she'll deputize half the city to search for me. As you make your way back towards the studio, you're relieved to see the paparazzi haven't caught up with you. So, what are you going to tell Gemma about the whole fake boyfriend thing? Your heart feels tight in your chest, but you're not sure what your answer you're hoping for. It'd be better if she refused, that way I... Uh, the way I want to stay near her, it's dangerous. I don't know, but it's your decision as much as mine. What do you think we should do? We should... Be honest. Her gaze lingers on you, her expression curious. You consider taking her hand and telling her about the desire you've been resisting all day. Maybe she'd grab your face, kiss you, saying she's felt it too. Maybe you'd lift her into your arms and feel her heartbeat in your own chest. Maybe she'd remind you that she's a world-class actress who could have chemistry with a spoon. So, instead of saying anything or any of that, you sigh and say the other thing. We should be upfront about the stalker. If you need a bodyguard, I can do it without the ruse. Duty. If the way Raimi reacted is any indication, I don't think that's on the table. 
But I'm not sure having a bodyguard is even necessary. It was just one... She cuts off as a man with a camera comes rushing towards you. Is that Ava Cohen? It is! With Ash Hopper! How the hell do they even know me? I guess the rescue went a little more viral than I thought. Oh my god, it is Ava! I love you! The situation escalates rapidly as more paparazzi and fans gather, their voices blending into a catacomb. You instinctively position yourself between Ava and the crowd, shielding her as much as possible. Stay behind me, stay close, the studio gate isn't far. You start pushing through the crowd, but it's a slow going as people shove cameras and microphones in your face. Are you too official? You feel the spike of adrenaline, just like you did yesterday when you saw the cable about to snap and fall on Ava. Focus up, let just get through. Ash, if we don't answer their questions, they're just gonna get more aggressive. But if we run away from them together, we can ditch them. It'll give them a story so they calm down. Glance at her and see the mingled anxiety and trust in her eyes, the same expression she wore just after you saved her. Something primal in your response to that look, something that just wants to deserve her trust just as badly as it wants to keep her safe. When we get to the studio, this could all be over. I never have another chance to be with her like this. Run from the paparazzi. You realize that deep down you're not ready to let her go, to let this time with her end. When I say run, we run. I'll be right behind you. You slow your pace, letting your hand rest on her lower back, guiding her. Is there something you want to say, Mr. Harper? Yes. The crowd waits with bated breath and Ava smiles, mischief in her eyes. Tell them, Ash. Run. You and Ava race down the street, taking advantage of the paparazzi's confusion. Did you see their faces, Ash? Stay focused, Starlin. Glance behind you to see a number of reporters rushing after you, cameras flashing. Quick! They're getting away! As you're around the corner of a studio lot, Ava suddenly trips on a crack in the sidewalk. Ah! You reach swiftly, catching her before she hits the ground. I have got you. You transport her back to the accident, her in her arms, your eyes locked in a powerful gaze. And I'll never let anything harm her. She places a hand on your shoulder, standing herself, and the touch burns even through your clothing. Ash, they're still coming. We need to move. Pick her up. You know what? Why not? We're special forces, right? You scoop her in your arms, holding her close, and take off again. You don't need to carry me. But having her this close, knowing she's safe because you can feel her every breath, you can't bring yourself to set her back down. We'll be faster this way. You weave through the building, Ava tucked in your side, fitting there like it's where she belongs. I think we've lost most of them. Looking back, you see only one reporter still following you, showing so no signs of slowing. I'm not leaving until you give me a scoop! I'm sorry this isn't an ice cream shop. This guy doesn't even know when to give up. The muscles of your legs burn as you keep Ava clutched against your chest. I'm not sure we can outrun this guy. What were you two of you doing together? What were we doing? It's none of your damn business. Still keeping hold of Ava, you flip off the man and his camera. Ash, you can't do that. The hell I can. Despite her words, she giggles, each peal of laughter rushing through you like a cool drink. You won't be able to use those photos now. The reporter takes the hint, falls away, and you stop in an alley, setting Ava down. She leans against the wall, panting for breath, her face flushed. For God, you're really not supposed to run like that after a heavy meal. Hey, I was the one carrying you and running. She winces as she shifts, clutching at her side. Are you all right? Just a cramp, it'll pass. Her voice is ragged, and you wonder what it would sound like moaning your name. Oh, really not the time, Ash. I'll guide her breathing. Shifting Ava away from the wall, you guide her hand to her chest, holding yours over it. Try to follow my breathing. Your heart hammers from her proximity, but you take slow, even breaths. I think... 
I've got it. Gradually, her breathing slows and she relaxes and the eyes fluttering shut. Beautiful. Better. Thanks to you. You carefully kneel down in front of her. Now, let's make sure that ankle is alright. You gently lift the foot she tripped with, feeling along her ankle and rolling it. Oh. Did that hurt? She shakes her head and bites her lower lip, a sight far more seductive than it should be. No, it tickles. Your eyes meet hers, the air around you charge. You long to run your hands up her leg, but you force yourself to let go and stand. Not sure uh, that was the most effective way of dealing with the paparazzi. But you have to admit, it's uh, way more fun. The reporters will probably still be at the studio, but at least we uh, tired them out. We tired ourselves out, too. And not even in a fun way. Pity. She smirks, and you let yourself stare, slowly moving your gaze from her glossy lips to her twinkling eyes. Shall we? She offers you her arm, and you take it, keeping her close for what may be the final moment as you head back to the studio. Unfortunately, as Ava predicted, the press and fans are waiting at the gate, but they're thankfully no longer clamoring for you to. Mr. Harper, you're a guard, right? If you're not on a date, why does Miss Cohen need security? Does this have to do with the accident? Is Ava in danger? If there's a threat, will there be delays in the production schedule? This is exactly what we were trying to avoid. If his eyes widen and she grabs your collar, forcing you to look at her. They're just going to make assumptions. We have to give them something else to talk about. For a moment, all thoughts of the crowd are replaced by her, the price of her body, making your senses light up. Ash, kiss me. Without pausing to weigh the consequences, you capture her lips in a white, hot kiss. You marvel at the tender feel of them as she wraps her arms around your neck. So they are together. That's a hell of a story. But you barely hear his words. All your attention on how right it feels to have her body tucked against yours. It's different from the kiss you shared in the museum. While you're still playing roles with all the people watching, it feels far more real. You gently stroke her sides as her lips part beneath yours, letting you have your fill of her. Sweet, addictive, you relish every taste, every shiver that rushes through her only makes the heat grow between you. Ash. Somewhere behind you, there's a whistle, but you're lost in her. Your senses overwhelmed. Ava. You kissed Ava for the world to see. Reluctantly, you pull away, still caught in her sparkling eyes, the warmth of her body. Then reality abruptly descends, filling the growing space between you as you remind yourself that it's all a ruse. I was barely able to resist her today. How am I going to do this for real? Eh, you'll get over yourself. Without further ado, I'll leave with a comment here in a minute. But if you did enjoy the work that I do, the voices I re er, do and the reading that I do, uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, check the description of the video. Plenty of ways to support and ways to become an intricate part of our community. So, with that being said, um, once again, hopefully you all did enjoy. It's an interesting story. Um, it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, the Bodyguard movie, you know, with Whitney Houston and, uh, God, I forget the guy's one name. Kevin, I believe. Kevin Costner. There we go. Um, so, yeah, no, that was a, that was a nice little movie. The ending kind of sucked, you know, if we're all being honest here, but, um, for the most part, the moving, or the movie, wow, the moving, the movie was, uh, quite fun and whatnot. I've, I've watched it a, a couple times in my life. Um, with that being said, so far, my feel and, uh, whatnot of this books and, and everything else is, it's okay, right? We'll see where it goes. Um, my only bone to pick with this is the following. So, we were on the set, we saved her, someone took a picture of, I'm assuming that, right? Um, so no one questions the fact that the person who was the bodyguard, right, might very well be, because people put themselves into positions like this all the time, I know it ruins your immersion, um, 
basically they put themselves in the positions like this so they can become closer to the person that they're literally and figuratively obsessed with. Just saying. So things like that do, in fact, actually happen time to time. Um, just saying it's a bit weird that actually no one suspected the the bodyguard slash security guy of this and now we're putting him even closer to her i'm sure some of you are also a little bit bewildered how we played the male throughout all of chapter two when it's supposed to be main character the girl we picked and him being our love interest um something tells me ever since the surrender series and a few other things like that I, something tells me that they're going to keep doing the flippity flop and i really don't have a problem with it per se but at the same time i feel like they're trying to sell us this love interest and that our love is the same on both sides and it's reciprocated right instead of just being honest with one another uh yeah just things like this add more drama and um yeah you know instead of just good writing just saying thanks again for watching catch you all later peace out